ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعود بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the speech and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invented to this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we newly invented to this religion of ours is an innovation. وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد many times we live in our life or through many times in our life we live in a state of fear but this is usually in fear of things other than we're supposed, what we're supposed to fear As Muslims, we fear Allah and none other than Him. And we shouldn't fear the creation in any way whatsoever. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, he said, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنْ فِي خَمْسَةِ أَنْوَاءِ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ أَحَدُهَا مِنْ قِبَلَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى أَنْ يَأْخُذَ مِنْهُ الْإِمَانِ وَالثَّانِي مِنْ قِبَلَ الْحَفَظَةِ أَنْ يَكْتُبُ عَلَيْهِ مَا يَفْتَدَحُ به يوم القيامة والثالث من قبل الشيطان أن يبطل عمله والرابع من قبل ملك الموت أن يأخذه في غفلة بغية بغتة والخامس من قبل الدنيا أن يغتر بها ويشتغل ويشتغله عن الآخرة عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه يسأل what means the believer has five types of fear The first, that Allah will take his faith or his iman away from him. The second, that the recording angels will write down something that will expose you on the day of resurrection. Third, that shaitan may cause your deeds to become null and void and invalid. Fourth, that the angel of death will come to you without any warning. No hint, you're not sick and sick and sick. Like there's a warning of your death is coming. And fifth, that the world will tempt him and distract him from the hereafter. This is a very profound statement from Uthman bin Affan, the third best in this ummah after Umar and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhumah. And we should focus on this so we make sure that our fear is only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these matters which are mentioned. He said, أَحَدُهَا مِنْ قِبَلَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى أَنْ يَأْخُذُ مِنْهُ الْإِيمَانِ Fear that Allah may take his faith away. And many of us, sometimes we live in a state of comfort. Like our deen will never be taken away from us. Like that's it, we're upon it now, and we will be till we meet Allah on the day of, judge, on the day of judgment. And we think because we're Muslim at this moment that we'll stay like that, not knowing, not recognizing, not realizing that any action, small or large, of shirk can take us out of Islam. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu, he said, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, إِنَّ بَيْنَ يَدِي السَّاعَةِ فِتْنًا قَطِعَ اللَّيْلِ الْمُظْلِمِ يُصْبِحُ الرَّجُلْ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا أَوْ يُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا 
He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before the hour comes, and this hadith is Hassan in the Sunni of Ibn Majah, the Prophet Sallallahu said, before the hour comes, there will be tribulation, like pieces of a black night, when a man will wake up a believer, but by the end of the day, he'll be a disbeliever. Or he'll be a believer in the evening, but by the morning time, he will be a disbeliever. This is a time we're holding on to our deen, is as the Prophet ﷺ, he said, like holding on to a hot coal. Because we go out in our day or we begin our evening on one way, believing. But at any time, because of our desires, our whims, the little intellect we have, we make choices, we say words, we do deeds that can put us into the realm of leading Islam. So constantly praise Allah, alhamdulillah, alladhi Praise be to Allah who guided us to this deen. Because there's billions other than the Muslims who are worshipping trees and stones and statues and angels and prophets and righteous people and the likes of this, and graves and the likes of, the likes of this matter. Praise Allah that He guided us to this. Make the dua that the Prophet ﷺ would frequently say in the house of Ummi Salima. When he would, his wife, when he would stay with her, he would say, Ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qalbi ala deenik. This was the messenger of Allah sallam. And he frequented this dua in her house. O changer of the hearts, make my heart firm upon this deen. Do not take it for granted. We should always fear that we might say or do something that will exit us from this deen. In the ways of kufr or shirk. So be mindful of this. Ask Allah the feet, ask Allah always to make you firm upon this deen. The believer should fear the second one that was mentioned with Thani, min qibl al hafadati an yaktubu, an yaktubu alayhi ma yaftabah bihi yom al qiyamah. Fear that the recording angels will write down something against you that may expose you on the day of resurrection. Some of us are so careful to commit sin. If our mothers or our fathers, if our brothers or our sisters, if our wives or husbands or children or any Muslim is around, we're careful. We're careful if we see cameras around. And we're failing at that point to acknowledge and believe and recognize that the malaika assigned to you at puberty are recording your deeds and recording your <clears throat> good and bad deeds. Some of us are so careful in those instances, but we're foolish to think that these angels will not see what we're doing. And Allah, He knows what we all do individually, even without the angels recording it. This is just extra proof against our own selves, Yom Al-Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَوَرَبِّكَ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says in the Qur'an, what means, so by your Lord, O Muhammad sallallahu we shall certainly call all of them to account for what they used to do. قال الله إذ إذ يتلقى المتلقيان عن اليمين وعن الشمال فعيد ما يلفظ منهم قول ما ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. Allah says what means remember that the two receivers, the recording angels, they receive each human after they've attained that age of puberty. One placed on his right, one on his left. When they reach that age to start recording their good and their bad deeds respectively. Not a word does he utter or she utter, but there is a watcher by him ready to record it. The recording angels, they're writing down everything. So mom and dad, husband, wife, children, brothers, sisters, people, they may not know. But these angels know. And even without them, Allah knows. Abu Umami, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sahib al-Yameen, Aminun ala sahib al-Shimal, fa idha amila hasana, athbataha wa idha amila sayyia, qala li sahib, lahu sahib al-Yameen, amkuth sitta sa'atin, fa in istaghfara, lam yaktub alayhi, wa illa athbata alayhi sayyia. This hadith which is authentic according to Sayyuti, in al mujam al-Kabir, the Prophet ﷺ said, the scribe who writes your deeds on your, over your right shoulder, the angel that's scribing your deeds on your right shoulder, he is trustworthy over the scribe on the left, the angel of the left. When a person does a good deed, the angel of the right, he writes down that deed immediately. But when a person does a bad deed, the angel of the right, he commands the angel of the left 
Hold your pen, lift it up. Do not write anything. Giving six hours, and this is a frame of time possibly, for you to go and make tawbah, for you to ask Allah. In the staghfara, if he asks Allah for forgiveness, then he is told to not record it, to not write it down. Otherwise, it will be recorded as a single bad deed. This is from Allah, al ghafur al-Rahim, the most forgiving, the entirely merciful, al halim the one who is so beneficent and kind and generous and merciful in all of his actions. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we should fear this. Our deeds being written down that will expose us yawm al-qiyamah. And this is why we say and we should say the dua, Rabbana atina ma wa'adtana ala rusulika wa la tukhzina yawm al-qiyamah innaka la tukhlifu al-mi'ad. Make that dua, O oh our Lord, grant us what you promised unto us through your messengers and do not disgrace us, do not humiliate us, do not embarrass us on the day of judgment, on the day of standing, on the day of resurrection, for you never break your promise. So this is an aspect the believer can fear. وَالثَّالِثْ مِنْ قِبْلِ الشَّيْطَانِ أَنْ يُبْطِلْ عَمَلَهِ And you should fear, as a believer, that shaytan may cause your deeds to become invalid. يَعْنِي بِالْمَعْسِيَةِ Through your disobedience to Allah, or to the sunnah of His Messenger وسلم, Fear that shaytan may cause your deeds to become invalid. Because the true believer is always on guard. Always on guard to purify his speech and his actions from the misguidance of shaytan. Allah said, in the shaytan lakum adu fattakhiduhu adu. Shaytan is to you an open enemy, an avowed enemy. He's not hiding behind anything to say that he's caring about you or he wants you to succeed. He's an open, clear enemy. So treat him as you would your enemy that you would see in this life from the humans. If your enemy came to your door of your home or saw you in the parking lot, you wouldn't just do anything. Yeah, you wouldn't be lazy. You wouldn't be uncautious. You would be very cautious to protect yourself, your home, your family, your honor, whatever it may be from that, that person. This is how you should treat shaitan, but a hundred times fold over because he is the avowed enemy waiting, waiting, waiting for you to slip so he can cause you destruction. So remember that it's very, une- it's very easy to nullify our deeds by a simple intention being incorrect. For our deeds to be accepted, they must have two, meet two conditions. The first one, an ikhlas. You must be doing that deed sincerely for Allah's pleasure. And second, there must be some ittiba' ittiba' the sunnah of Rasulullah. There must be actions done in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger wasallam, Because all other deeds will be nullified. You can't just be entitled to say the shahada, to say I believe, and say I believe it in my heart without doing good deeds. Iman comprises the belief in the heart, the statement of the tongue, and the actions of the limbs. Abu Huraira, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, أَتَدْرُونَ مَا الْمُفْلِسِ He said to the, to the companions, do you know who the bankrupt one is? قَالُوا قَالُوا الْمُفْلِسِ مِنْ أُمَّتِ قَالُوا قالوا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المفلس فينا لا درهم له ولا متاع The bankrupt person amongst us is the person who has no money or has no property. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المفلس من أمتي من يأتي يوم القيامة بصلاته وزكاته وصيامه ويأتي قد شتم هذا وقذف هذا وأكل مال هذا وسفك دم هذا وضرب هذا فَيَقْعُدُ فَيَقْفَصُ هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ فَإِنْ, فإن فَنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُقْفَصَّ مَا عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْخَطَايَا أُخِذَ مِنْ خَطَايَاهُمْ فَتُرِحَ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تُرِحَ فِي النَّارِ This hadith which is sahih in the sunnah of the Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the bankrupt person from my ummah has nothing to do with how much money you own or property you own. The bankrupt one in my ummah is the one who comes on the day of Yom al the day of standing, the day of resurrection. And he comes with his prayers, and he comes with his fasting, and he comes with, with his zakat. But at the same time, he comes having abused such and such a person. He, come, he comes having falsely accusing this one, wrongfully consuming the wealth of this one, spilling the blood of this one, beating this one. So he is seated. And then the one he harmed, they will take away 
they'll be allowed to take his hasanat, his good deeds away from him. And if he runs out of good deeds, they will be allowed to put their sins upon him. And then he will be cast into the fire. Our deeds at any time can be null and void, can be voided out by shaitan tempting us to do the haram, by tempting us to do what is forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thawban, he narrated from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bihasanatin <laughs> Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in this hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, he said, I certainly know a people from my nation who will come on the day of resurrection with good deeds like the mountains of Tihama, meaning a large amount of good deeds. But Allah will make those deeds scattered like dust, like nothing, like nothing whatsoever, like they didn't even exist. Thalban said, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, describe them to us. Tell us more about them so we do not become like them unknowingly. The Prophet وسلم, said, They are your brothers, they're from your race, worshipping at the night as you do. So these were ones who used to worship Allah. But they will be people who, when they are alone, they used to commit sin and transgress the limits of Allah. So be mindful of this. Fear that shaitan may cause your deeds to become invalid. Always be on guard when it comes to shaitan. Because he never stops and he never takes a break. وَالرَّابِعْ مِنْ قِبَلَ مَلِكَ الْمَوْتِ أَنْ يَأْخُذُهُ فِي غَطْلَةٍ بَغْتَةٍ Fear the angel of death may come to you without a warning. When that unexpected guest comes at your door, and he's knocking at your door, you can't turn away, you can't ask him for more time, you can't say come back later. When your time comes, your time comes. كُلُّ شَيْءٍ لَلَّهِ بِأَجْلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ Everything with Allah has an appointed and a fixed time and there's nothing we can do to change that. So we must ensure that we will always be doing the good deeds so that we end the husn al-khatimah, but that good end, the good end that our deeds, our final deeds in this life are good deeds pleasing to Allah so that maybe our last deeds before we leave this dunya will be in obedience to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلِكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ تُرْجَعُونَ Say, Allah says in the Qur'an, what means say, the angel of death who is set over you will take your souls, then you will be brought back to your Lord. To your Lord. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّ قُلْ إِن قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تُفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Allah says in, surat, in an ayah in Surah Al-Jum'ah, say, indeed that death from which you are fleeing, it will find you. So there's no fleeing this death. It can come at any moment, even if you're strong, even if you're young, even if you're wealthy, even if you're educated, even if you're from a righteous or a pious family or household, it doesn't matter. When your time comes, it comes. So always think of this death. Fear that it may come to you without a warning, so that you end upon good deeds. والخامس من قبل الدنيا أن يغتر بها وتشغله عن الآخرة and the last thing that Uthman mentioned, fear that this world may tempt you and distract you away from the Akhirah. One of our biggest temptations is this dunya, without a doubt. We become busy chasing this dunya, the glitz and the glamour and the fame, chasing money and property, uh, cars and, and businesses. But we forget that the one who chases the dunya, that he may never get the Akhirah, but the one who chases the Akhirah, while alive in this dunya, you will get both the akhirah and this dunya. If you just chase this dunya, you may never get it at all, and you're definitely not going to get it in the akhirah, potentially. But if you chase the akhirah, then you'll be getting it, you'll be getting the good in this life and the next. Allah, He said, Al-Malu wal banuna zinatul hayat al dunya, wal baqiyatul salihatu khayrun inda rabbika thawaban, wa khayrun amala. Allah says what means wealth and ch- children. Family, they are an adornment of this life. 
But the good righteous deeds, the five daily prayers, the azkar that you make, the dua that you do, helping the good, helping, helping the, the needy, serving your parents and the neighbors, any of this good character, good, nice, gentle speech, all of this is better for you with your Lord for rewards and better in the respect of hope. We say in khutbah al-hajah, every khutbah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amana attaqullah, haqqa tuqatihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun, O you who believe, fear Allah by doing all the good deeds that He's ordered and abstaining from what He has forbidden. Fear Allah as He should be feared. Obey Him, be thankful to Him, remember Him always, and do not die except in a state of Islam as Muslims with complete submission. Always fear this. That this world may tempt you away and cause you to not leave this world as a Muslim. And this would be the greatest loss, greater than losing everything in the world and what is in it. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد uh, brothers if you can move forward allowing some space for the brothers walking in to come and pray two rak'ahs before they sit down بارك الله فيكم we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to allow us to fear him and only him the way he deserves to be feared عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه he said the believer has five types of fear. The first, that Allah may take his faith, his iman away from him. We should fear this, never take your Islam for granted. Two, second, that the recording angels will write down something of your deeds that may expose you on the day of resurrection. That may expose you. Instead of having Allah coming and having a private conversation with you, surrounding you with a shield, a barrier, so that people cannot hear the exchange of what you did wrong in this life and all your sins. Covering it for you and forgiving you. Instead of fearing that, yani, uh, instead of hoping for that, you could be one whom Allah does not even want to talk to or look at or forgive or purify their, their, their sins. This is the choice, fear that the reporting angels might write down something that will embarrass you and expose you on the day of resurrection. Third, that shaitan will cause your deeds to become invalid. That all the good you can strive for in this life, that shaitan will cause them to be hada'an manthura. As Allah's Messenger said, like scattered dust. Fourth, that the angel of death may come without a warning. Some people, they get sick and they know that sickness is coming and they go through months, years, of challenges. They can try to better themselves in those times, but some death comes without a warning. What will you end upon? What will be your final deeds before you leave this life? You must reflect that death can come on any moment for you to be able to save yourself with respect to that, that's this point. And fifth, that the world may tempt him or her and distract him or her from the akhirah. If we apply this message to our current time where there are so many afraid, and fearful of the creation of things here. And we get into this again now, whenever it's political, whenever it's election season, of who's going to be the president. Oh, if, if it's this guy, he's going to do this to the Muslims. If he's that guy, he's going to do this to the Muslims. We're fearing people instead of fearing Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Apply this message. Applying this message only belittles the influence of anyone over your life other than Allah. Because we should only fear Allah. Let our fear be only of these things we've mentioned, not of, not of anything pertaining to this life. Remember the scales where Allah will take the deeds that we commit, that we do good and bad, put them into weights and they will be weighed. Remember the meeting with Allah where again, He will either talk to you and cover your sins or He won't even want to look at you because of certain sins you committed or talk to you or purify you. Remember the Sirat, the bridge over Jahannam, the bridge every believer will have to cross in order to get to Jannah, but some may fall off and fall into the hellfire. Remember these things. Remember the foundation found in the Quran that our whole lives, that our whole lives are, should be based upon, that we should remind ourselves of daily, that whatever we think 
is good for us may not be good for us. And whatever we think is bad for us may not be bad for us. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ وَعَسَانْ تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَانْ تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ This is a foundation that you need to make sure, that I need to make sure, that we all need to make sure we are living upon. That perhaps it may be that you dislike a thing, but it's going to be good for you. And it may be that you think a thing is good for you, but it's going to be bad for you, and Allah knows and you do not know. This is a very important principle and foundation that you must know and be firm upon. Let those who want to talk and plan, talk and plan. But you as a Muslim should know, Allah khayrul makarim, He's the best of planners. So accept Allah's decree, do not get caught up in politics and fearing the creation, fearing the people. Do not fear a man, do not fear a woman, do not fear this world, only fear Allah. It may be that Allah has something better planned for you. It may be that Allah has a test to test if we are really true in faith by what is to come. But we must accept it as being from Allah and a word of advice in these times and something to implement ourselves and for our children that the believer should not fear being labeled a Muslim. Stop hiding your Islam or your Muslim identity. You should not fear being labeled a Muslim, or telling someone I'm a Muslim, or looking as like you are a Muslim. You are one. Bring the label on. Maybe it will cause those who know you and know your character and your, your, good, your good ways with the people, maybe it may be a cause for them to enter Islam. Say, Alhamdulillah, that this would help you reach Jannah only upon being upon this deen. Because Allah has already given us the guidance to this deen and made us Muslim, and given us the label, the term, the name of being from the Muslims. So we already should be known for what we present, for, by what we profess with our tongue. We should be known by the way we dress. We should be known by how we look. We should be known by the way we pray. We should be known by the beauty that comes off of our tongue, by our akhlaq, by our good character and our good manners, by our etiquettes. So I leave you with this reminder. Ubadah ibn Samit, he said to his son, إِنَّكَ لَن تَجِدْ طَعْمَ حَقِيقَةِ الْإِيمَانِ حَتَّى تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَكَ وَمَا أَخْطَأَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ يُصِيبَكَ سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن أول ما خلق الله القلم, القلم فقال له أكتب فقال القلم يا ربي ماذا أكتب قال أكتب مقادير كل شيء حتى تقوم, تقوم الساعة قال يا بني إني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من مات على غير هذا فليس مني انتبهوا من مات على من مات على غير هذا فليس مني من مات على غير هذا فليس مني عباد من الصامت رضي الله عنه he said to his son oh my son you will not taste the reality of faith until you know that what has come to you could not miss you. When Allah has written to come to you, to befall you, no one and nothing was going to stop it. And what has missed you, what has missed you, could not come to you. Whatever you didn't get, whatever you didn't receive, whatever didn't come your way, no one and nothing could have, had, could have made it come your way, or made you to acquire it. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, saying the first thing Allah created was the pen. And he told the pen to write. And the pen said, my Lord, what should I write? And Allah told the pen, write down everything that was going to happen until the last hour comes. He said, my son, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say, whoever dies on something other than this is not from me. Whoever dies on something other than this belief is not from me. So know that what has been written for you is going to come to you and no one can stop it. And know what has not been written for you. There's nobody who can give it to you. Unless Allah decrees that thing. So let us only fear Allah and put our trust in Allah. Know that His plan is best. His qadr, His decree is best. And that His promise will never be broken. 
اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع قلب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على اعدائك وعلى الدين اللهم انصر اخواننا واخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم نفس قلوبهم وثبت اقدامهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا ارحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين